so it's midweek time again for another farm update but as you can see i'm not in lincolnshire Rhonda and i are back in portugal for a few days we've got rain at home and can't do a lot uh, on the farm at the minute but if there's anything to be done tom and reuben are more than capable of getting it done we might be doing some sugar beet lifting in the next couple of days and uh, see if that goes all right anyway um this update we've got quite a few bits going on that we did before we came out here and we are cooling the black oats and also the capulet beans we've finally got those going and uh, it's doing a really good job so you'll see how we're doing that also we start drilling winter wheat on a block of land that had uh, cover crops on and didn't have any crop growing this last year and that's going really really well so take a look at that and also walk over the cereals event site and look at how we have, have uh, got all the grass established and how level it is and just a bit of an overview of where the trade stands are and things like that also tom gets some moulding done uh, we were waiting for um, the ground to soften up from being too hard then it became too wet but we finally managed to get a window and tom's got that done and also the weaving drill the sabre tine uh, we got mike from weavings has been over and got us set up with that and uh, we've got some winter wheat planted up on the cereal site in the Syngenta sprayers arena so we've got that running as well which would be great because we'll be able to get that drill running on some heavy land uh, in the next week or so so that's it for this intro hope you enjoy it thanks ever so much for watching and we'll see you at the end trail a load of oats there already just going to tip this this second load and get the fans on there is a pipe underneath there just pushing up the heat there to, ready to switch the fans on now i have to put these back in the shed just keep them under cover and we'll get this header under cover as well we're in uh, one of our sheds at the main farm where we've got the floor dryer and we are needing to do something with the capulet beans that were cleaned you saw in last week's uh, video now these are the beans but they really are very very wet got ever so wet made a little ret retained area we slid some bags up from the tunnel um, where the air goes just put one bag in got the fans on and you can actually feel the airflow coming through them we're just going to cut the second bag and get those on as well see the steam coming up from them that's the air tunnel with the fan at the other end and then um, there's three each of those sections there is about just over a meter wide that's one section you can see that line of nails that's another and that's another so underneath here coming from the tunnel we've slid three half ton bags up to underneath the floor here so the air isn't getting out here so it's all been forced up through these beams and you can actually you can hear it coming through these beams so it's really doing a good job at cooling them off i can feel the airflow coming through and you can see there how all the stuff's moving um i don't know whether you can see it all so yeah look at that how it's uh, plenty of airflow through them and then the other what we combine the other two and a half tons what we did on saturday we're going to block off this area here and make another one of those but because there's more beans we're going to come down here and come up to here and have a bigger area here and get them all dried but agri are coming today to pick them up to get them um, cleaned anyway that should be all right hopefully you can see tom behind me over my left shoulder we have started drilling this is on the headlands so i'll just show you we do the headlands last actually and this drill really does pull the headlands up and put the seed in well after they've been run on when you've drilled up and down and turned on them so you can see where tom's run here he ran this is a wheeling from coming to fill up but you can see we've turned on them there drilled in the middle here
I still absolutely love this drill. It's just started the first breed of some other headlands. Obviously the inside breed. And that's the beauty of GPS, we can do that. So it takes out all the wheelings of where it's turning. So the tines at the front are rigid. There's no giving those at all, so they do a really good job. Leveling out any trash, leveling out any soil. Wheelings from the tractor as well. And the roller's firming it. Then that's where the seed's going in, where the tubes are. Then another firming roller at the back, and then the little finger harrows just leveling it up. We have tried lifting those harrows up so it leaves it in a tire marks, but it doesn't leave it dead level. It does just want those back harrows to finish it off. I'm back up at the heath on the cereals event fields, and Ruben's just finished rolling one other field. This is the field I rolled um, last night. I'll just show you the surface and how level it is. Hopefully this will be really smooth when the grass grows and for everybody walking about. So this particular area is where there's a whole load of trade stands, uh, not machinery, it's all the other smaller stands through here. And then virtually in the middle of the field where that bush is, coming down the field through the middle to where, uh, where that bush is just there the line of flowers and then the other side of the flowers towards that far hedge is the car park but this is looking really good lovely and level see the grass seeds some grass seed there some of it but some of it's been rolled in and the rain that's coming next couple of days it should be growing that looks really good really pleased with that nice and level because we broadcast it and we don't drill it, we don't get grass in rows. It just comes all a lot more even. You can see here, this is the finish. And then in this corner where we've got rows of trade stands this way, we've worked and rolled it this way. So everywhere as people walking, we've done it the same way as the walkways are going to be. See a little bit of grass seed there there but uh, most of it's buried really pleased with this this is how we fill the drill up we use the hoppers that's one's empty a lot better than you handling bags blowing around so we fill these in the yard Ruben or I will do that while Tom's drilling and then Tom's that can manage this on his own with the with it's a lot easier and quicker so you just pull the slide there those hoppers hold a ton and a half we ought to have some bigger ones really, they hold, that's, that drill holds two tonnes. We have got this, the trailer we bought a couple of years ago, a seed filling trailer that we need to convert. We haven't got it converted yet, we've been doing other things, but we do need to do that. Then you're not under the bags either, that, that aren't very safe, you can see they pile up, which is good, so we've got plenty in. That's it, that's everything. Blowing the, sorry, not blowing, hoovering the tank of the John Deere combine out. We're just getting ready for these beans. We've got Agri coming to collect the two and a half tons of capulet beans that we did on Saturday, and so we're just getting ready to put this into hoppers 
and tip the trailer in here so then they'll take them away and get them cleaned this doesn't look good news we had a uh, puncture in the Alita so Tanvix have, uh, have come to repair it our usual supplier have a word with Pete at Newark if anybody's interested in a new repairer but looks he brought a new tire and is it bad news Tube's gone, it's been pinched by the sidewall. Yeah. On the inner. It's already been repaired there, it's gone through the patch again. Oh. There's some splits on the back of the entire. Is there? Floor. So. Oh dear. I said I can repair it, but I can guarantee it until I leave it, the gate. It, it, really, it'll go again, it won't it last. It will 100% go again. So where's it? Tubs up. Uh, the other side. The other side. Oh, is that it down there? You've got a split there. Yeah. Which will be open up, pinching the tube. You've got another one hole oh, there. Down there, is that it? Down yeah. there. there. It's just. But when well, you look, look at. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, you haven't got. I'd say she's been on there some time. Oh, it's been on from it's the original tyre, so yeah. it's been on there 20 years. Yeah. You've got the hole is there. Yeah. I don't know what else is under there, so if I bought that off, it might be a massive grave. I think that, yeah. Because that's already been repaired. You've got another repair, repair there. there. She's just going to keep going. It is, it is. Yeah, right. One of those things. So they've come to take this header and combine back. That's Farrell's. See how interesting how it the, the turntable turns. Look at the wheels there. It's four-wheel steer. Tom in front, it's just starting to get dark, it's about half past six Monday evening and Tom's got the mould drainer back on. Just trying to see if we can get some more done before some more rain comes. Not going as nicely as it did when we were doing this in uh, early July on the, all the land we didn't have any crops on to harvest through the cover crop. Still creating a nice bit of lift though. Not sure whether you can see or not the amount of lift that creates around the leg. I'll try and focus the camera on one spot of the ground and watch when it goes past it. The light might not be good enough. You can just see it raise a little bit. That disc ought to be a bit further down now, the top softer. Look at the brackets there. That's high up, which means the disc's not in as deep. Tom brought that up when it was really dry and hard as it was stopping the mould drain from going in the ground and normally run that lower down to create a deeper slot in the soil before the lake gets to it which means you don't get so much disturbance and that bit of rubbish hanging around the lake there it would cut through that if that disc was a bit deeper anyway there's a little area here that's been dragged and Tom's dragged this through here he dragged it a few days ago when uh, before the last lot of rain just to try and make sure that the rain was going to get through if we had some and it's worked because this is a lot drier here than it would have been there was water stood here a few days ago so Tom's managed to drag it and get rid of the water and then of course what will happen here with moulding this now any water we get through here it will drain through quicker and with the mould as well it will really help it so we're just going to get as much done tonight as possible before it rains just looking at track slip there is a little bit. Again, I'll try and focus the camera in one spot. Just watch. Just go past. Not a lot, though. See the ground moving.
it's uh, Tuesday morning and we've got something from Weaving Machinery coming to set us off with the new Sabre Time drill this morning. So we've, uh, the forecast was wrong, Tom was working all through the night doing the moulding that you've just seen in this clip and he managed to get the field finished and I, think he, I don't think he finished work till about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning which was brilliant, thank you for that Tom. And uh, he's obviously not coming um, just at the minute, it's coming in for 9 o'clock. Uh, for when we get the um, drill running. Anyway, just um, looking at the, one of the fields um, that we're in here, Ruben's just sprayed it. I've just missed him. I've just been doing something else. And um, this is one that we need to, um, we need to, to drill soon. But it's really tricky. You can see all the greenery here. We've sprayed it with glyphosate. And this is barley uh, volunteers. And volunteers are what's come out the back of the combine. And I'll just show you them in a minute. But it's really tricky because you need about 24 hours really um, on the, for the spray to get into the plant before you can cultivate it and disturb it and loosen the roots and things. But the problem you've got is when it rains, you've, if it rains after you've sprayed it, your sprayer wheels, which we've got one just here, you've a job to see it, but I'll show you again in a second. The sprayer wheels stay wet if you come too much rain. But the problem you've got then, if you don't spray it and then, and then, you, uh, and then the wind gets up, um, then you can't do any drilling because you can't come in here and put a crop in here because all this will be grown with the crop. Then, of course, you've got black grass and other weeds as well we need to kill. So the spraying off before you drill is, is, is tricky. And, and the sprayer this time of year is really, really busy because it has to spray off all the fields before we plant any crops in the ground. And then once they've been drilled, and if you roll it as well, uh, you then have to put a pre-emergence on afterwards as well. So you spray every field before the drill and every field after the drill. So it's quite a balancing act, getting it all um, sort of uh, getting it all ready and also just knowing the, when, to, when to do it because of the weather is so unpredictable at the moment. But I'll just flick the camera around and just show you uh, the soil here because it's quite rough but that's good because it means it'll absorb some of the rain and it's stood the rain we've had quite well. So you can see that is the sprayer wheeling along the outside and it's sunk in a little bit but the sprayer's got 700 wide, 710 wide millimetre tyres so what's that? 30 inch tyres nearly, something like that. Um, and when you start to look at the soil, you can see some big lumps here when you look at my hand. But they're all right because, look, they're all breaking up. So look at that, just, just, just sort of disintegrates. So that's the beauty of having some land rough. If you get some rain, it does stand it and uh, absorb it. You can get on quite well then with the drill. So here are volunteer barley that's come out the back of the combine. Some of these will only be real small chippings but they still grow and some of it will be good grain, but you always lose a bit of grain out of it. Every combine loses grain when you harvest and you can alter settings, but if you go too fast, you lose more grain and you're not set it up right, you lose more. Quite thick just here. Um, and it's always worse when you bale because we haven't got the, sp the spreaders working, the spreaders that spread the chaff. And normally all that would be spread out over there and it would look thinner. So when you bale, you get it a very concentrated in a line, every sort of breed behind the combine. And that's why it's thicker there than it is, say, here. But I can't see any black grass in here yet, but it will just need cultivating. There's broadleaf weed there. The glyphosate will get that. Another one there. So good job getting this sprayed and just needs pressing once. To be honest, this would drill. This actually, with our Simba drill, this would drill quite well in here. We might not even do this. It might just do the headlands. We'll see anyway. But the outsides want coming in with a Simba culti press. There's a sprayer wheel, you can see that. It's done, a, hasn't made much of a mark at all, really. It's the beauty of having a lightish weight sprayer with these wide tyres. Here, it's just a bit rough and unlevel on the headlands here, so this definitely does need just something doing with it before, hold there, before we put the drill in. Some of you might recognise that number plate, and also you might recognise this fine physique of a man eating he's been eating, been eating biscuits james look at this yeah, here are james look at this this is what goes on at the meetings here yeah it, <laughs> this has come out of somebody's truck that's got f4 something md registration <laughs> number <laughs> so mike's just gone through a lot of the settings on the drill with us and showed us how to calibrate it and everything tom's putting some seed in we're putting half a ton of variety called dorsum in this is going to be on the cereals uh, sprays and sprayers arena with plot of wheat in the middle this is the screen in the cab really nice screen this the weaving drill's got this um does your markers which we haven't got any markers on colt is in and out fold half with shut off so if you only want to drill in a very narrow area you don't have to have a whole drill drilling and there's all the 
nice bright screen. And then there's Tom putting this half ton of seed in so we can go up and get the drill running up on the light land and just get it set up. That's it, we're just heading up now to the heat. Drill the pot in the sprayers arena. So shuttle service and cousin Michael is just about crikey. <laughs> So we're just measuring out now where to drill this wheat in here. Well, Michael's no doubt looking at his diet plan and checking his weights compared to cousin James. And uh, we just got drilled 73 meters long of wheat in this plot here for the sprayers to run up and down. So we're just doing that now. So just getting unfolded now, it's all calibrated. So that just shows you the length of the amount of room through it. A lot of room through there for trash, rubbish, wetter soil, should be good. One thing we're going to do, when it's folded up, it sits on that round plate there. You can see it's already scratched for going on the concrete. I'm going to put some plastic on there just to protect it a bit. There's, all, there's four of them. There's another one there and two on the front. So the beauty of dual wheels. Obviously we've only got half a tonne of seed in here at the minute. You can have another half tonne, but look at the flex on that tyre. following arrow put more, more weight on that so it just levels it out a bit better just looking at the depth I'm going to seed in here yet but the slot's not very deep we just think it's hardly going to be deep enough so we're just going to put the drill in a bit deeper so that's done on the shims so it had two pink and a, and a green we've just taken the green out and put the blue in so the less shims in the top there, the deeper it is. All right. We're just checking the depth. Yeah, 30, about 38 mil there. Right, yeah. Got some seed there. That's the one's in the row. In the row, uh, there you go, yes. Just in the row, take measure down there. We can see. Yeah, yeah. About yeah. I'm gonna check four rows. So we've now done a few adjustments and got it set up. So that's the last breed now we've finished just put half seed rate on this inside breed so we think some of it was got and some of it wasn't we just want to make sure so that's this area all completely put in now it's with a Syngenta variety called Graham because Syngenta sponsor this arena so it's with a feed wheat variety called Graham so I've just got Steve Orchard here from Lynx FM or it used to be the farming program he presents just wants to do a bit of a, a start of the regular updates she's going to do about the cereals event so that's it for the midweek update we'll see you back on uh, sunday morning and i think i'm going to be posting from my visit when i went to spaldings in lincoln that's spaldings the spare parts uh, suppliers not spaulding the town and uh, i've got two updates to do from there so i'm thinking we're going to be posting one of those this sunday anyway that's it for this midweek update thank you ever so much for watching and we'll see you on sunday